welcome back. The show is still Rise and Shine Delhi, reaching you from the Seville Sea Spectrum Television, live here from the very beautiful hills of Ibiapuran. And yes, indeed, in case you don't know, you can follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram with the handle at Spectrum TVNG. And our website is www.spectrumtv.ng. And just before the break, we were talking about quite a number of things, especially reference to uh, maintenance culture and um, social amenities. And mm -hmm. uh, we have been joined right now by our guest in the studio in the person of Osondu Ahirika, who is a public affairs analyst. You're welcome to the program again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank to you very much. It's nice to be here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's exciting. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Akwaibo. Good morning, Nidurwan. That's yes. right. Nidurwan or Nidurwan. 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 Exactly. You're welcome, Nidurwan. sir. Good to have you again. Thank yes. you. So just before you came in, we were talking about um, social amenities and maintenance culture in Nigeria. So um, let's ask this question. So why do we lack this maintenance culture in Nigeria? Because you see a lot of things that the government have provided, but yet we still find out that there, there is a crack or hinge here and there. So why do we have that? It starts from the home. Okay. You know, the maintenance culture is something that must be cultivated at home. I, 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 I try an experiment in my home. Let me begin with my home. That's right. And perchance my children are listening to me, they'll know what I'm talking about. I go buy <laughs> a pack of beak. Okay. I never buy biro, what you call biro, pain mm -hmm. uh, in, in singles. Sing, sing, yeah. I buy a pack and I keep it at home. You wouldn't believe it that even before a month is out, or it goes missing. <laughs> now, <laughs> none of my kids has been able to keep one pain for a week. For a week. So the maintenance culture starts from there. And I That's try right. to imbibe in them that, look, okay, I'm going to put a sign on this pain. <laughs> You're going to show me this pain at the end of Sunday. <laughs> okay. And with all the traits, <laughs> I, I try to apply to see if they can keep that pain. At the end of Saturday, oh my God. one of them will come to me and say, Daddy, <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, that my pain. I don't know if, if Augusta is the one that did it. So wow. it starts from the home. Yes. You go to the kitchen. After eating, after meals, you try to imbibe the culture that immediately after eating, get your plates washed and stacked. That's right. You will see if they do it for two days, on the mm. third day, they lose that concentration. That's right. So maintenance culture is apparently one value that is not entrenched in our psyche, in our mindset. So it starts from the home. Mm. Now, if you, you take it to the larger society, when people can't care for what they have, now with bias to Ibibio, let me say mm. what Ibibio say. That's right. That's the owner. Mm -hmm. The owner of a property mm. takes care of his property with his two hands. hands. But a stranger uses one hand, that like a desical attitude. Now, if people can't even maintain their own property, how much more? How much you look more? at people, people, you give somebody your car to drive for you, or you hire somebody as a driver. Mm -hmm. When you are in the car, he, he, <laughs> he takes his time, he's very careful. <laughs> give him just 10 minutes huh. to drive out. He drives that car with such recklessness because mm -hmm. it is not his money right. that is used to maintain the vehicle or to fix the vehicle when it breaks down. So it, it is apparently something that is down there in our subconscious that we don't care for anything that is put under our care. You take it to the public f sphere, that becomes worse mm -hmm. because after it's nobody's property <laughs> and it is not even apparent to them that it is the taxpayer's money that is used. Yeah. In other words, your money that is used to provide those amenities. So nobody cares. And everybody just treats it that way. That's why we have a very bad maintenance culture in our state. That's and in right. Nigeria as a whole. That's right. Yeah. Now, talking about that, because it, we know that that is a fact, what you've said. Is it specific to this part of the world? Because uh, from what we see in the movies that other cultures are doing pretty much well in that regard. Is it a culture thing for us? Uh, absolutely. That's why I told you that it's, it's, it's not in, in, ingrained in our cultural mm -hmm. value mm. to care for what we have. The maintenance culture, and I, that's why I started from the home. Mm. 
And I don't know if people will share the same experience I, I, I'm giving you now. Now, you, you live in a compound. Yeah. When in, in those days, by God's special grace now, at least uh, I, I have a place I can call my house. That's right. But in, 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 in later, uh, former years, or past years, I was a tenant. Now, you wake up in the morning in a, a compound with four tenants. Somebody will wake up in the morning and, and sweep a stretch <laughs> of his own, you know, apartment yeah. from this window to this window, window <laughs> and leave the rest of the compound and then he goes to work. He has done morning duty. Now, if the other three tenants don't have time to sweep, yeah. then the entire compound, ha. even with what he has done, becomes a, a total mess and they don't care. That still goes back to that culture. But I made it a duty that any day I wake up, I try to set the example. And those who are my neighbors will attest to what I'm doing. I sweep the entire compound. Any day I come out to work, I do it for everybody. And I don't wait for any thank you. If, sometimes before they even show up, I had gone to work. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't wait for that. Now, it is something we have to learn. It is not here. If you go outside of this country, mm. and why it is so, it is because there are no consequences too. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to caring for public infrastructure. That's right. There are no consequences. People dump refuse anyway and, yeah. and, and go scot-free. People vandalize uh, public utilities like yeah. wire, uh, NEPA cables, uh, waterboard uh, 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 and, and pipes and amenities. And mm, there are no consequences. Even when they are caught, maybe a little bribe will settle it and they go. Mm. But if you try this in other nation right. states, yeah. you will go to jail. That's right. You will go to jail. You will pay hefty fines. It, it, Breaking traffic rules here. <laughs> if you break traffic rules, if you break traffic rules in foreign lands, you will be ticketed. That's right. And whether you like, you can't escape the ticket. You will pay heavily for it. That's if right. you break it here, if the law enforcement agents corner you, mm. a little bribe settles it. So impunity is the word. Impunity cuts across every strata of life in our society and it affects most our maintenance culture we do everything with impunity now okay. talking about uh, social amenities we know that most times they are out there and uh, when they get vandalized everybody suffers for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. how is it possible for people living in a particular environment to actually keep an eye on this stuff beautiful there is something we call community watch it it it, it behoves on everybody to do something about it. Okay. Now, it, I, can, I can assure you, there are places in our country mm -hmm. that have a very stern maintenance culture. They set up a community watch. Now, it starts with any, any village that has, of course, every village has a structure, mm -hmm. the youth structure. They call them the youth, uh, they have a youth president. They have the village council where they have a chairman. And of course, they have a village head. They have a village sec council secretary. Mm -hmm. Now, especially the youth structure. There are villages you go to, and they have a solid youth structure that maintain that one of the duties of the youth structure is to keep a watch over public utilities, uh, like transformer, nepal cables, water pipes, pipelines that are uh, situated in, in their the community. Mm -hmm. And you dare not you dare not transgress on those areas. Yeah. The youths will get hold of you, <laughs> deal with you, and then hand you over to the law enforcement agencies and ensure. Even if you have a vehicle and your vehicle rams into, some vehicles lose control, skid off the road, and ram into this part, they will, they will impound the vehicle, ticket you, report you to the law enforcement agencies, and until you fix that amenity. And now, every village should have such a culture. That's right. And maintain. If you are in a village and, and your cables are being vandalized. That means the villages, in fact, there are people from the village who are abetting those who are perpetrating that, that crime. Because if the village sits out, or the community, or the clan, or the local government says, we want to maintain, sometimes you award, the, the, the government awards a contract for the electrification of a, a community. Mm -hmm. As soon as they mount poles and bring cables, two days after, all the cables are, are lost. Mm -hmm. If you investigate properly, they are insiders That's collaborators right. <laughs> within the village who collaborate with external forces mm -hmm. because they will get boo for <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, i'll always use this in bbs <laughs> so after we now have something they call bring uh, back our language <laughs> That's you right. know, it is the rat that is in, in, inside the house yeah. that in, invites mm. the rat outside 
to come and feast in the kitchen. Okay. So until this is rooted out, mm -hmm. you cannot have a good maintenance coach. So community watch. Some people call it vigilante. Yeah. You must have this round the clock vigilante in your community to be able to maintain this uh, uh, amenities because it is for your good mm -hmm. and for your betterment. Mm -hmm. When you come out to complain about vandalization of your neighbor, the government cannot do everything mm -hmm. for you. There's something we call community self-help okay. and, and, and maintenance culture should be one of them. The community must fashion ways to be able to maintain. Uh, now let me quickly ask you this. There are situations yeah. where most times when these uh, public utilities are vandalized uh, like for instance uh, the, the transformers now, PHCN or Potaka uh, Distribution Company will now come and say that the whole community will have to contribute to replace that. Now, if that happens, it is only logical that when you're paying NEPA bills, it should be taken out of it. Mm. But you find out that you still pay NEPA bills and still buy transformer for yourself. What's your opinion on that? Is that actually the right way to go? That's, that's exploitative. First and foremost, we blame the community for having lost their guard mm -hmm. or let down their guard for their cable or for their transformer to be vandalized. The blame absolutely goes to the community. And of course, if they should bear the consequences, that should, that should you know, stir them to yeah. do something, to be, become proactive and do something so as not to face such consequences again. But I don't think, legally speaking, mm. it is right to impose levies on the community to fix a public yeah. utility. I don't think that's right. And, and where that is done, there should be a way to subsidize, you cannot ask people to pay for their uh, vandalized uh, cables or transformer, and in the end, you still bring the hiked uh, electric electric bills. bills. Sometimes they don't even have that light. For mm -hmm. instance, mm -hmm. for a month or two months that the uh, the uh, transformer was vandalized, and yet bills are coming for those months because right. especially with people who don't have prepaid meter, yeah. and after that too, they will still be expected to pay those. So these are also uh, fallouts or, or the disadvantages of having these vandalized things in our, in our communities. That's why that also makes it very, very imperative for us to make sure that whatever public utilities, we are, because there are societies that don't even have it. Mm. it it's, it's shameful to say that even in Aquaibum State, yes. with all the uncommon transformation we had <laughs> and the completion agenda we currently have, mm -hmm. there are villages in Aquaibum that don't have electricity, yes. that don't have pipe bomb water. Mm -hmm. I went to a village called Obodme in, in the local government area. Hmm. I was surprised that in the entire community, almost a clan, there was nothing like pipe bomb water. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing like that. I had to, and then I, out of curiosity, I had to follow them to see the source or to go to the source from where they drink their water. Yes, it is a, a, it is a system, a, a very clean spring water. But how to access the place mm. down a steep valley? And mm. you see children, elderly people mm. struggling to climb up the hill. And, and then I asked a former local government chairman there. I, I may not like to call his name, mm -hmm. you know. But who was in, in, in power for about seven months? I said, do you mean uh, for seven years? Almost five or six years. Mm. I said, do you mean that in this council you couldn't even provide one borehole? Mm. He said, well... You could, they call this place Obod May because of the rocky situation. Mm. We are not able to sink borehole if you try to sink it. But that, that was, that, that's not a, a, a true excuse yeah, yeah. for such places. There yeah. are technologies and equipments that can still do it. Yeah, but yeah. this is in the 21st, uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in 2021. Mm. And that is heartbreaking. Sad. Now, l let's just jump into this. You, you've made a lot of assertions which pretty much hold water. Now, um, my issue now has to do with um, bringing in social amenities to the people. You already started talking about mm. it. In fact, it's like you preempted my conversation. <laughs> now, how would you rate the government? You, you, I mean, you said a lot about the people maintaining what has been given, but let's look at the government now. How well have they fared in giving what is necessary for the people to survive? Remember, it's called social amenities. They have some basics. There has to be power. There has to be at least water. Mm -hmm. At least those two ma major things. So how would you say the government has fared thus far in providing these things for the people, for them to maintain? And roads inclusive. <laughs> if, I, if I should 
on it's a scale. It's not just about this present government. Yeah. yeah. The government as a whole, because government right. is a continuum. Mm -hmm. I, should, I should score them with a mediocrity. Oh, my God. All we've had is tokenism. Now, it, does, it, does it not hurt you mm -hmm. that during elections, campaign gets to every village, every world? Mm. No matter how inaccessible the terrain or difficult the terrain is, politicians will get to every world and every village, every hamlet, every clan to campaign. No matter how tough that terrain is, ballot boxes and ballot papers, <laughs> we'll get indeed, even ballot talks <laughs> will access the place and ensure that the election is conducted and, and results are counted, or ballot papers are counted and results collated. But when it comes to providing social amenities, it becomes very difficult. Excuses come. The terrain is difficult. You know, uh, uh, because of the terrain, uh, the road construction will take a while. And, and uh, the, the expenditure or the money that will go into the, uh, 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 this uh, project, <laughs> project is going to... And all these excuses come. Look, it's shameful yeah. that we have government. And we have communities like Obodume that don't have water. You go to Ibno, there are communities that don't have pipe bomb water at mm -hmm. all. Ibno, East Nobolo. And this is heartbreaking for a state such as Akwaibom, a promised land, a land that flows with milk and honey. It is not tenable anyway. It's not acceptable mm -hmm. to me. You go to Abia State. Abia State is the most misgoverned state in the entire country as far as I'm concerned. Because I, I, Aba is the second largest or third largest commercial city in the entire country in fact in, in the entire sub-region and yet Aba does not have motorable roads mm -hmm. do you know how much revenue is generated from Aba on a daily basis they don't have roads you you look at the environment it's sickening yeah. no sanitation no, sanitation, no sanitary yeah. the sanitary condition is appalling so but during campaign oh my god you will see Politicians are their best. Tour all those areas. Make all, loud, all, all, all kind of laudatory promises, but in delivery, mediocrity. So for me, the, the government has not done well. And for all those in authority, mm -hmm. uh, it's a shame that you are, the, you, you are a house member for a state constituency and there are hamlets, there are communities in your constituency that don't have access roads. At least grading, mere grading. They don't have water. Mm. They don't have electricity. It's shameful that you call yourself an honorable member. It's shameful that you're a commissioner. And there is a place in the local government you come from. Even if the government cannot do it, you can do it as a way of giving back to the society. Mm. It is shameful that we have a governor, or we have deputy governors, we have speakers of the uh, assembly, we have senators, and then we still have communities that are languishing in darkness in the in year 2021. Mm. They don't have electricity. Some for three years now, some for and every day on you hear it on community on uh, community views. Mm. You hear it on uh, a people's parliament. You, you know on, on the your sister radio station. You hear it from all across all people complain that for three years now they've not had electricity. Mm. Yet we have a government. Mm. It is heartbreaking. And people in government must sit up, provide these amenities. Yaka Adoke Mufi may provide the amenities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the people don't Bandela, take care of them. Yeah. We blame them. Yes. Than the total absence of it. Because in many places, there is a total absence of social amenities. Okay, okay. now okay. let's now talk about the little ones they have offered. Go ahead. Uh, uh, we have cases where you, you said that the reason for not maintaining most of these things is lack of uh, maybe punishment. Are there laws uh, that are put in place to safeguard this in case someone is caught defaulting? What law can be applied to that? Absolutely, absolutely. We, like, well, let's start with the environment, for instance. We have state environmental laws. That's right. Let's go to uh, the electricity and, um, and power uh, uh, sector. We have laws. Gov uh, we have laws that treat, uh, that, uh, uh, treat uh, vandal vanda uh, vandalism. vandalism. Pipelines. Let's look at pipelines, uh, public utilities. We have those laws. The problem with our country is that there are no consequences. Laws are not enforced. P the problem of Nigeria is not the absence of laws. It is the absence of justice. Laws are only made to bite 
the poor, mm -hmm. those that don't have legs or connection, the, the, the big men, the, the big men, quote and unquote, they are sacred cows in our country who go away, who get away with impunity. It's something that Ray Bull described as the courage to do nonsense. There are people who have the courage to do nonsense because they have backers. Mm. Even if you pick them up, a call will come from above and, and that settles the matter. Right. So it's not, it's not the absence of laws, I can tell you. We have laws that deal with all manner of vandalism and that, that specify how public utilities should be maintained. These laws are not kept. Even on the part of government. For instance, we have... By the way, let me commend the Aquarium State Government. They've done massively well in maintaining... Some public utilities, especially like the Gospel of Borobudur Stadium, for instance, you, you compared to the National Stadium, the Mushu uh, uh, yeah. Kashimo oh, Abiola Abel, yeah. Stadium yeah. in uh, yes. Abuja, it's nothing to write home about. Compared to the National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos, it's nothing to write home. It has become a den of thieves. In fact, the MKO Stadium has just been recently renovated again, and they say maybe they will start playing football. But for how many years now? It had become a, 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 a grazing field for headsmen, <laughs> cows, litter the place. But the state government has consistently maintained the Gospel of Babio Stadium. So I give them kudos for that. Now, why are they able to do it? Because even in the laws, there is an established pattern for taking care of that stadium, and then it is enforced. Mm -hmm. So the government must enforce rules that also have to deal with maintenance of public utilities. Pipeline vandalism was a, 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 a you know a regular, a regular thing in this country, mm -hmm. but it's no more regular. Why? Because uh, pre under President Yaradua, Omar Yaradua, as part of the amnesty program, mm -hmm. a, a, it was a, a, a system was fashioned out where former militants were now engaged to provide pipeline security, okay. and they were paid for it. And Nigeria rested and moved away from from that. So. There are ways the government can find laws and fashion a system mm -hmm. by which they can also enforce the maintenance of... And it will engage people, pay them, and it becomes a meaningful engagement. That's and right. it's their duty. Look at our plaza, for instance. There is a committee set up to run the plaza and maintain yes. it. When there was no committee, the place was, was turned into a den of thieves and... and, 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 and Okay, we'll go on a brief time, but when we return, we'll talk about if community policing is actually a, way, a possible way out for, you know, maintaining uh, public utilities. Don't go away, stay with us. Uh, Rise and shine returns right after now.